In part two of our design, we are going to be constructing probably the most complex portion of the design, and that is the interchange. Every project will be different. However, in this project, we'll be using the Open Roads technology. And if you're using Open Roads technology now, and you're you if you're using it in much the same way you used the prior corridor modeler in Select Series 2, you will probably be very interested in this part of the presentation. Every project will be set up a bit different, focusing on the exchange area. This will be all new construction for this project and the alignments have been laid out and referenced as you saw in the beginning parts of our series. What we'll be focusing on is the primary corridor and how we uh, gain and lose lanes as we cross over these various intersection geometry. So in the past you used template drops and position them just right and so forth. Uh, today we're going to create the 301 or extend the 301 corridor across this section and we're going to do it in a way that will encompass um, various intersections. So the designer doing the 301 corridor, myself, will be taking ownership of some of these intersections. Um, that's not to say you could not or you couldn't go and move this into uh, or have another designer work on this and reference your file and create the ramps and intersections in a different file uh, but we'll be doing some of that a little later on so um, we're going to work through this and we're going to start with adding a template drop so before we add the template drop we'll just take a real quick look at the template and from our template library, we'll see um, uh, various templates set up for 301. Uh, the overlay process I had started and using a milling and uh, an overlay component for the portion that was over top of the reconstruct. Uh, I simply copied that template and removed the overlay and milling and I place a template and you'll notice I have a seam and I have a reason for that at this stage of our development but um, the seam and the components that is but basically all my components and my point names are the same in this case so I want to close out of that and I want to come in and start by creating a template drop right up against the initial template so uh, I'm going to locate my corridor and you see I have my template SC301 or rather overlay 2 set and uh, we'll set a starting point and we'll set that right to the beginning of the corridor and we'll move the end just out beyond our corridor we'll leave our interval drop at 25 feet and we'll set the transition to zero. So basically, we won't really have a transition. We're going to just move from our overlay template into our new design template. And also notice that even at the areas of the overpass, uh, I'm simply constructing my um, corridor or my template drop right across that area. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the three-dimensional image in the background. So I'm going into my reference and grab the file and I'll just turn that off. Now at this point in time, I can also turn off my constructions because what I want to focus on is the two-dimensional layout of this corridor. What we'll be doing is we'll be drawing um, guides offset lines and we'll be applying a point control to those lines across this area but in order to figure out where my lanes start and stop uh, in my situation I want to see the intersections so because we're using open roads technology 
we have the capability to drop the intersections in and then move the corridor apart and place those intersections or have those intersections just update with it. So uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to be using some civil cells that I developed. And if you follow along on the MBuild site, you'll see how to develop things. Uh, actually have um, in the works a video of the off-ramp civil cell that I'll be using here today. Um, I just need to have some time to make edits to it. Um, as edits to the video, that is. And so what I want to start with is the um, off-ramp uh, intersection. And you see I have one marked FG for finish grade. And basically this is my intersection. So I'll be using this on the two off-ramps. So this is the off-ramp for the southbound 95. This is the off-ramp for the northbound 95. So the first thing we want to do is locate our through road edge of pavement and the ramp line. And this is a rather complex off ramp uh, as a large grass median and a right turn uh, merge lane build into it. And um, we'll accept. And uh, while this is placing, this is also creating the three dimensional model of the of uh, what we're doing here um, but at this time I'm I'm very sure that it's placing correctly just because I can see the 2d geometry and I want to go while I have it open and drop in the next one as well that. Now at any given time, once these are placed, I can pop open another view and view the three-dimensional aspect of my site. And so that's what I just did here. And so I can see uh, my view set up with the three-dimensional corridor. So here I am working in 2D in view 1. And over here I've popped open view 8. In view 8, we've gone down here to the view setup tab and we set it to the three-dimensional managed model. So uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to drop in these other intersections and these are the intersections to the on-ramp. So uh, as a designer I'm going to manage these as well and again you could work this any way you want. You could have this referenced into another file. Uh, it's just going to work good for me. Um, you could actually uh, come back and do clipping from a reference and any kind of complex workflow you want, you could we can handle. So uh, this will be the on-ramp entry with finish grade. So you can see we have a turn lane built in here. So remember in the past, you'd have probably ran your template drops and tried to determine where that lane belongs. Uh, you'll see how this works in a second. Uh, I'm going to grab the highway edge of pavement and the geometry line for the on-ramp. Right click and just as a point of reference the cell that I'm dropping in here I had not previously created uh, that cell took me uh, roughly 15 minutes to create at the most um, and actually there's a little trick to it because of the quadrant issue and oops there I have grabbed the wrong reference so let's reposition that And again, as you've seen, these cells are very dynamic. In fact, the whole corridor, everything's very dynamic. So to not take uh, advantage of the dynamic capabilities in open roads technology, we sell ourselves short. 